let's put our hands together for Malika G. Longoria. She's back. I'll take that. My scrap paper. I <laughs> see, I didn't remember that. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Wow. You guys are here by divine appointment, Amen. and I'm so glad to see you. I'm going to speak today about prayer and the law of mind. So my title is Prayer and the Law of Mind slash Change Your Thoughts, Change Your Circumstance. The law of mind states, it is done unto you as you believe. When we pray, we must believe. We must believe that God is capable and that he wants to answer our prayers and that he does answer our prayers. He already knows our needs and before we ask, he's already in the process of allowing it to come through. Our belief is what we have to work on. We have to believe, we have to expect it because we're the only thing that can block the answer to our prayers. Because God is already active on our behalf. And it says, he knows our needs before we even ask. Before he put us here, he knew what we would need. If you're not in the habit of communing with God, it is difficult to know that God is there for you. It's difficult to know that he's taking care of your needs because you don't have the benefit of that personal experience, that father to son relationship, that love, that caring, the things that make you familiar with your children and your family and your friends that make you know they've got your back. You have to establish that with God as well. And the way to do this is through prayer, meditation, and communion. We want that father to son experience. We are the son of man. We are the Christ. And through Christ, we can commune with the Holy Spirit and the Father. Jesus often said things like, I am one with the Father. The Father is in me and I am in the Father. If you see me, you see the Father. This is because Jesus know, knew our Father on a deeply personal level through habitual prayer, meditation, and fasting. That was his habit. He exercised his mental, his spiritual, and his body all the time. He walked the deserts, he prayed, and he meditated. And as you exercise, you get stronger. And your belief system will get stronger. So we want to remember to do those things. When God set us here, He said, Let us make man in the image and likeness, in our image and likeness, and let him have dominion. Yet God gave us more. She endowed us with many blessings, many gifts. In fact, we have three blessings that we know of. One was to be fruitful. That's to bring forth, to manifest. When a tree is fruitful, it brings forth a great fruit. And to multiply. This is to demonstrate abundance. We have the opportunity to demonstrate abundance. It's a blessing. It's ours. It's a given. And the third, the third is to take dominion. That's to assert or insert authority over our circumstances. We have dominion, but how do we have this dominion and how do we take this dominion? When we pray mindfully, we can exercise these three blessings. Prayer is our most powerful tool. It's the tool that implements change, especially when we recognize that prayer is not only the words we utter to God, but our consistent thoughts, our consistent attitudes and habits. All this 
is our prayer. We hear that we pray ceaselessly. We do. We're praying all the time with the thoughts we entertain, the habits that we develop, and our attitudes. If you're walking around with a nasty attitude, that's your prayer. If you're walking around angry all the time, you are going to invite the same types of things into your life. So our attitudes are very important. Our thoughts are important. We have to be mindful of what we let into our existence and into our experience. You don't want to just allow anything in. We have to gird up our loins. We have to be mindful. I had a friend once that used to tell me there was nothing wrong with pornography or a little erotica. And this was a very nice person. Seemed to be a very good family man. And was a good family man, in fact. But he was allowing this into a circumstance. And soon, he wanted to stray. And he did stray. And this is why, you know, our thoughts become things. And so when, while entertaining those thoughts, eventually he took action on those thoughts. So we have to really be mindful. It's not okay. You must be mindful what you are letting into your experience. What you watch on the tube, what you read, what you talk about. All these things are very important because they become a part of your habitual thought. And we know from the creative experience that what goes in to the subconscious mind are the seeds that we plant that create our existence. So those seeds are going to be the crop that you harvest or the crap that you harvest. <laughs> So we want to be careful about the kind of seeds that we are planting in our subconscious. For as a man thinketh, so he is. What do you believe? James was addressing the 12 tribes of Israel. And he, and he says about prayer, let him ask in faith without doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. For that person must not suppose that a double-minded man, unstable in his ways, will receive anything from the Lord. We at Unity strive to be single-minded. That's why our centering statement says there is but one power and one presence in my life in all the universe. God, the good, omnipotent. We don't believe in another power. We don't believe in a power of evil that's come against God and they're fighting and struggling for us. We don't believe in that. We pay attention to the one power, the one presence. And if we do that and we keep our mind on the prize and our mind on the presence of good, we pray, we meditate, we develop a strength and a familiarity with God, guess what happens? Your thoughts will get cleaned up. Your constant thoughts and habits and your attitude will be one of good because God is good. And what is the old saying? A bird of a f birds of a feather flock together? <laughs> well, what better flock could you be in? All right. <laughs> you want to strive to be comfortable around God and have God thoughts because those thoughts are good thoughts. And these are the seeds that you want to cultivate and plant in your subconscious because through these seeds, you get to take dominion over your circumstances. Don't we all want to have some dominion and some say so about what happens to us? You know, if you don't have that, you know, anything goes. It's like standing naked in the middle of a hurricane. Anything's bound to happen to you. But when you are wrapped in the arms of God, you are protected. And you 
can achieve your three blessings. Dominion comes to you as you become adept in working the law of mind, for it is your unuttered ceaseless prayer. So when you work the law of mind, and that's by guarding your thoughts and having yourself centered, you begin to have dominion over your circumstances because the seeds you're planting are positive ones. Last but not least, let go and let God do. Don't ask God for something and then decide how it needs to be done. I have a friend that often asks me to come over and help her. But everything I do, she's going to tell me exactly how to do it. If I'm washing the dishes, oh, don't let the water run while you're doing that. If I'm doing, well, I think you should dip it in the water. There's no way that <laughs> she's got to tell you, and it's very annoying. And so you know what? I stopped going to help her because she annoyed me. Don't annoy the Lord. <laughs> Let him handle it. He's been around a while, he's been around the block a couple of times, and he knows how it should on the We don't want to get involved in that stuff. That's none of my business. Let go and let God do it. Let go of all those preconceived ideas of how this should unfold. Well, I guess the first thing that should happen is I should get a raise tomorrow. You go and you don't get the raise and God is not answering my prayers. What's up with him? He said he always answers them. They're answered already before you even prayed. You have to open yourself. You have to be open-minded and single-minded. You have to be open to receive your good. The only thing that blocks you from having your prayers answered is you. Because God already told you you've got it. So if it's not in your hand or you're not seeing it, you need to go back to the drawing board and say, what is it in me that I need to get out of the way so that my good could come through? Because when God blesses you, it's pressed together and shaken up and comes down in bundles. So get out of your way and allow the blessings to come through. Let go and let God handle it. Let go of any preconceived ideas. When you plant a seed in your subconscious, the creative process is already taking it. It's going to magnify it. It's going to magnetize it and draw to you what you need. If you're busy looking this way, you might miss everything that's over here. So let go of the preconceived idea that it has to come from here because you don't know where it's coming from. Just be open, alive, awake, alert, enthusiastic. We talked about that a couple of weeks ago. Be enthusiastic and be alert. Look for it because it's coming or it's there already and you didn't realize it. I listened to The Secret, and this gentleman was talking about how he needed to come up with this sum of money, and he didn't know where it was coming from, and he prayed and he let it go. And then he by chance met somebody at a conference who he, where he was at that was working for the Inquirer, and she mentioned something to him that gave him an idea. Well, I got this book at home I have never done anything with. Now we have chicken soup for the soul. And it made him the money he needed. It was already there. Somebody at that conference sparked a little idea in his head that said, oh, I need to go back and look at that. So if he had a preconceived idea that it was supposed to come from the lottery or some, something else he did, that book that had been sitting there would have never been published and we wouldn't have the joy of that. So let go and let God handle it. Don't worry about it. The worries of the day are sufficient. That worry is not your portion.
God is your portion, your only 